Today on the Scrum Line, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this absolutely gorgeous pavlova. Nice and meringue and delicate on the inside with a crispy outside. This recipe is a crowd pleaser and you'll find it on pretty much every Australian Christmas table. I'm so excited to show you guys how to make this right now. Today's video is sponsored by Queen. Queen make a lovely range of vanilla extracts and vanilla bean paste, which you guys see me using in my videos all the time. I absolutely adore them. They're really easy to use and they taste delicious. Now I'm gonna be using a vanilla bean paste in the cream, which is gonna give us those lovely specks of vanilla beans in the cream. And then their vanilla extract, which is syrup based, and is not gonna interfere with our meringue, but still give us that really delicious, strong vanilla flavor. If you'd like to find out more and download their free ebook, which is available right now for free, which is loaded with Christmas recipe ideas, hop on over to the description box down below. I've left a link there for you guys. Download the ebook, go check out their range. It's absolutely fabulous. Now, there are a couple things we need to do to prepare before we begin making our meringue. So one of the things that we wanna prepare is our baking tray. So we're gonna be laying our meringue on top of a piece of baking paper. And so that we get a nice, perfect round shape, we wanna grab a 20 centimeter plate. I've got a bowl here, roughly around that size. I probably wouldn't go bigger, otherwise you end up with like a flatter pavlova. And I'm just gonna use a regular pen to go around the plate and trace a circle. So this pen side, we're gonna flip it over and that pen side is gonna be down. Now, when we make our meringue, we're gonna add little dabs of meringue on each corner of the baking paper and that's gonna stop it from flying around in the oven. Today, I'm gonna to be using my stand mixer. So this is the bowl of my stand mixer. It's a glass bowl. When you're making meringue, you don't wanna whip up a meringue in a plastic bowl because it can tend to have leftover grease and it's a little bit harder to clean and glass and metal are much, much easier to get grease off. So I clean my bowls very thoroughly with soap and warm water, but just to be on the safe side, we're actually gonna be cleaning it using some regular white vinegar. So I've got a teaspoon of that, pour it into the bowl and then I'm gonna use a paper towel to just wipe the vinegar on the inside of the bowl. And if there is by any chance any leftover grease in here, it'll be gone once you clean it with the vinegar. Right, so that is clean. Well, I'm also gonna be using a balloon whisk to whip up my egg white. So I just wanna wipe that down with the vinegar as well, just to make sure that is nice and clean. Okay, so let's talk about our eggs. Our eggs are what we're gonna to use to make our meringue, specifically the egg whites. Now, you wanna make sure your eggs are at room temperature and you wanna make sure that they're fresh because both of those things will make sure that your meringue whips up really, really beautifully and fluffy. So, we're gonna be separating these from the yolks. Now, while you're doing this, you wanna be careful not to get any of the egg yolk into your egg whites and to help us have a bit of an insurance policy to making sure that we don't contaminate all of our beautiful egg whites with egg yolk, we're gonna be cracking into a separate bowl. So everybody has a different way of doing this, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. I just tap the eggs together and then I place swapsies with the egg yolk. So we'll set these egg yolks aside in a separate bowl because you can use them to make loads of really cool things like pastry cream once you've got your beautiful egg whites all done, you're gonna pop them into a bigger bowl. And I'm gonna continue doing this until I've got all my egg whites done. You wanna make sure that you do this 30 minutes before you whip up your meringue, just to let them sit out and age a little bit. Again, that's gonna help make sure that these whip up really nicely. Now that our egg whites have been aging for 30 minutes, I've popped them into the bowl of my stand mixer, which again is very, very clean and dry. And I'm gonna be using my balloon whisk to whisk these up on high speed for about two or three minutes. So you can see here that the meringue is nice and frothy. It's tripled in size, and I'd say it's at about a medium stiff peak. Um, so it holds its shape pretty well. 
Now, with the sugar, we wanna add this one tablespoon at a time because we wanna allow the sugar to dissolve before we add the next tablespoon. And it's also gonna ensure that your meringue actually has time to whip up because if you add it too quickly, you risk deflating the meringue. So we're gonna add one tablespoon to begin with and we're gonna mix on medium high speed and let that continue mixing for about like 10 or 15 seconds before you add the next tablespoon. Okay, so all of our sugar has been added. This is really thick and glossy already, but I can see sugar granules in here and they're not quite dissolved and we definitely wanna make sure they're dissolved. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape down the bowl because we wanna make sure that we've got any of the sugar granules on the sides of the bowl that might've been flying there or stuck there, mixed in with the rest of the meringue. I'm gonna put this back on for another 10 or 12 minutes to continue whisking on high speed. I'm gonna come back and show you what the final step is. All right, this is looking really, really smooth. I'm so happy with it. It's like really smooth and glossy and thick and there are no sugar granules. This is exactly what you're looking for. So what we're gonna do right now is I am going to mix one tablespoon of cornstarch. You might know it as corn flour where you are with a teaspoon and a half of vinegar. We're gonna mix those two ingredients together. You wanna pour them nice and evenly in to your meringue. And this is gonna ensure that we get that nice marshmallowy center and crispy outside of our meringue. We're also going to add a teaspoon of queen vanilla extract. Now, what's great about this vanilla extract is that it's syrup based and not alcohol based. So it's not gonna interfere with our very delicate and beautiful meringue that we just whipped up. So we're gonna mix this for 30 seconds just to help everything kind of mix and combine. And then we're done. Gorgeous. This is looking so beautiful. I know it's tempting to eat it right now, but just wait. We're gonna pop it on top of our baking tray. So just get rid of the meringue that's on your whisk. Then we're ready to move on to the next step. So just dab your finger in the meringue and add it to each corner of your baking tray. And that is gonna help this baking paper stick. Right, so we're going to add, I'd say maybe two spatulafuls of this meringue on top of the baking paper, because I just wanna kind of get the circle shape nice and neat before we add the rest of the meringue. So just use a spatula to spread it out. And guys, this is not a race. Take your time, get it nice and neat. We'll add the rest of the meringue on top of that. Now guys, a key thing to getting a nice marshmallowy center to your meringue or as much marshmallowy center is to actually make this a taller pavlova rather than a shorter one because the crispy outside can get a little bit thick. So we're gonna spread this around, get the top as flat as you can, and we're gonna use the spatula to go around the pavlova and just neaten and straight up the sides. So you're aiming to get this looking like a regular cake and then I'm gonna show you this really cool technique for like decorating the sides. All right, so using the same spatula, we're gonna go around the sides and up to the top and create this really cool spiral effect by doing that. It's just gonna actually make the sides look really pretty, but it's also gonna give this structure and make it less likely that the meringue will collapse as it's baking. This is ready to go in the oven. I've preheated my oven to 150 degrees Celsius. As this goes in, we're gonna turn it down to 120. Bake for one hour. Do not open the oven door, otherwise you risk this thing collapsing. And then after an hour when it's finished baking, turn the oven off and leave it in there to cool down completely before you decorate it. Once that's done, I'm gonna come back and show you just how to decorate it. So our pavlova is almost finished. 
cooling down so we're ready to whip up the cream. This is really, really easy. We're gonna add some heavy cream to a large mixing bowl. So you wanna make sure that your cream is completely chilled because it's gonna whip up better. Now, I don't add sugar to my whipped cream. It's just a personal preference, but if you'd like to, you can add one teaspoon of caster sugar in there. To flavor my cream, I'm gonna be adding some Madagascar vanilla bean paste. Now, I love this stuff because it adds those little flecks of vanilla beans in there and it's in a squeeze bottle. So it's really easy to use. I'm gonna use my hand mixer to whip this up to stiff peaks. It should take about three or four minutes. Perfect, so we've reached stiff peaks. We're ready to put this thing together. So my pavlova has cooled down and it did collapse in like on the top, which is completely fine. I'm not worried because we're gonna be adding toppings on top. So nobody's gonna see the cracks or the collapsing, it's completely fine but I can see on the inside, it's perfectly marshmallowy and I'm so excited. Let's get this thing decorated. You wanna begin by adding dollops of that fresh vanilla bean paste cream on top and you wanna gently spread it around. Now everyone has different ways of decorating this. I've got some raspberries, strawberries and blackberries and then I'm just gonna garnish it with some fresh mint. Now, just a note, you want to decorate your pavlova right before you're ready to serve. Otherwise, you risk the berries bleeding into the cream and it kind of starts looking a little bit messy. So because I'm about to serve this to myself, I'm gonna be adding my fresh berries on top now. Guys, isn't this like the prettiest thing ever? If you add some little fresh sprigs of mint on top, especially as a Christmas dessert, it just like really finishes it off and gives you those nice red and green colors. This is fit for the grandest of Christmas summer parties. You're gonna find this on pretty much every Australian Christmas table. And there's a reason why, because these are so light and delicious and the fresh berries on top just add a spring of tanginess and just freshness and it's, it's really delicious. Let me slice into this and show you just how marshmallowy the center is. Time for a taste test. This looks so good, guys. Mm -hmm. That literally just melted in my mouth, like literally melted in my mouth. You guys can have this melt in your mouth pavlova experience if you click in the link down below to grab the recipe. And guys, thank you so much again to Queen for teaming up with me on this video. I love using their vanilla extracts. I've been using them pretty much since the day I started the Scram line. So if you'd love to grab more summertime recipe ideas for Christmas, they have a free ebook. Click the link down below Download the free ebook and you'll find loads of really great recipe ideas there. I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me in my kitchen. Make sure that you hit the like button guys because YouTube lets others know about this video. And if you wanna see more delicious recipes from me, click over there. I have a video that you can hit and start watching that. And above that is a subscribe button. Click on that to subscribe and then hit the little bell icon so that you're notified as soon as there's a new video. Thank you so much. I will see you all on the next episode of The Scram Line. Bye.